Hi, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build your own 808s from the ground up using only built-in plugins inside of Cubase. In modern production styles, I think it's fair to say that a solid bass sound is critical not only to get that nice sense of energy and weight to the low end, but also to add that sense of groove and bounce to your track. Today, we'll be using Retrolog and a handful of basic effects to create a modern hard-hitting 808 sound from scratch that you can bounce out and save for yourself as a one-shot or save as a preset inside of Retrolog to create your own unique 808s and iterate on a preset really quickly to develop a whole variety of sounds that you could save for later. Here we are in the project, and today we're going to begin by taking a listen to the final product in the context of the full track, and then we'll solo it out and take a listen. Then we'll begin creating our own from the ground up. To begin creating our 808s, we'll open up Retrolog, and this is a classic virtual analog style synth that's very capable not only for 808 sounds, but also snares, leads, heavy, modern basses, cymbals, and just about everything in between. To get things cooking here, we'll need to select a waveform. Now, you can use whatever waveform you would like, as each one will provide a pretty different result. Generally speaking, most 808s are designed with a sine wave over here. However, after all the distortion and stuff is applied later on, this results in a more squared off waveform, so you could start off with a square and just filter it out to save a little bit of time. In this case here today, we'll select a triangle waveform because this has a few added harmonics compared to the basic sine, which only consists of a fundamental. So this way, it's going to translate a little bit better to smaller playback systems that won't really have too much low end to them. And mix translation is really important, especially when it comes to the low end and being able to perceive a bit of that low end energy. Now, we'll just need to drop this down an octave here and get this more in the bass range. And now we've got this. Next up, we just need to make a few quick adjustments to make this hit harder and sound a bit more like an 808. Let's begin by going up here to the top in the voice section and setting the synth to be mono. Then we'll move over here to the low pass filter and start shaving off a bit of high end information. For a little bit of added flavor in the filter section here, you can add some resonance and maybe just a little bit of distortion to taste. One other important tip is to utilize key tracking inside of the filter section, because if we're playing lower notes, this sounds fine, but if we move up to higher notes, they're gonna get filtered out. So key tracking allows us to make the filter move as we go up on the keyboard, that way the higher notes cut through as well. We'll bring this up to maybe about 60 or 70%, double check our cutoff point, and adjust it as necessary. To finalize the sound here, we're going to go down to my dear old friend the Mod Matrix and add just a few quick adjustments. To begin, we'll go down here to the first source and we'll select the filter envelope. Then in the destination, we'll assign this to the pitch and adjust the depth. Now we just need to adjust the envelope shape to a relatively short decay, maybe about 250 milliseconds with a touch of release and adjust this to taste. A longer decay results in a more significant pitch drop and a shorter decay is much more short and snappy, but it might not be as audible. For some really easy added expression within the modifier slot here, you could tie this to velocity. Now what this means is the velocity will determine how aggressive that pitch drop is, which can be really cool to add just a bit of movement and interest to the 808 and not make it such a static, repetitive bass sound. To finalize this, we'll go up to the filter section and add a touch of the envelope here as well. This is a really good idea as it lets a bit of that mid-range information through to really let the 808 knock and complement the kick sound well. If you'd like even more expression to the 808, you could assign the mod matrix to the cutoff in the same way as we did the pitch envelope, to the control and the knock amount based on the velocity utilizing the modifier. This isn't really necessary, but as you can see, it's really easy to create some pretty complex sounding 808s with only a few clicks.
One of the really popular tricks in modern productions is 808 glides, and I think they sound really, really cool. And lucky for us, Retrolog makes this incredibly simple to do with just like two clicks. To add some glide to our 808, we'll go up here to the voice and enable the glide and then adjust the glide time. I find that something between 30 to 100 milliseconds is a good starting point for this, but again, it just comes down to the track and your personal taste. One more important thing is to go over here to the trigger mode and set this to legato. This is a particularly important step to get those nice 808 glides because this allows you to slide between notes smoothly because it doesn't re-trigger the envelope. Now, if all that just sounded like a bunch of sciencey stuff, what this really means is that it's not going to repeat that knock as we press different notes, and we can hear this by quickly playing a couple different notes on the keyboard. If I play three individual distinct notes, you'll hear that each one has its own added thump and knock at the beginning, but if I hold a note down and then move to other notes without releasing them in between, we'll hear that the 808 sound glides between them. With that being said, programming these glides is incredibly easy because all we need to do is just make sure that these MIDI notes overlap. That way we're just getting one continuous glide of pitch across a solid 808 sound without re-triggering it every single time. One final really cool tip is actually to automate the glide time throughout the course of your track. This way, what you could do is make each glide unique. You could have some that are very long and drawn out, others that are really quick and snappy and aggressive. Now that we've got this done, it's time to start post-processing on our 808s, and this is a really important step to make your 808 stand out and also just have a bit of unique character, because a straight-up waveform is maybe not the most inspiring sound on the planet. To begin, we'll add a quadrifuzz, which is one of my favorite distortions to use on 808s, because we can dial in different distortion sounds for each frequency band, which gives us a lot more fine control of the overall timbre of the 808 in the end. Let's begin by leaving the default tape setting here on the low band and driving that up just for a bit of weight. Next up here, we'll go to the tube mode for these low mids and adjust between the different modes to hear which one sounds best. Let's drive this up fairly aggressively and play it a few times and switch between these. That one sounds really nice, but it maybe just needs to be backed off a touch. Now let's go to the upper mid band here, switch this over to distortion and add some really aggressive drive. This will just add some nice, crispy grit to that top end of the 808 sound. From here, I like to open up the channel strip for this channel in Cubase and add a few basic touches because the channel strip is really powerful and I think sometimes a little bit overlooked. Let's add some basic EQ here by enabling these bands and adding maybe just a little bit of a low end bell. So we'll go down here to parametric and increase this just a bit. Maybe add some meat around 80 hertz or thereabouts, maybe about 70. Let's just back this off to make it a bit more subtle and check out the result. And then let's go to the low mid filter here and back things off just a touch, make it relatively wide and we'll go down to maybe about 300 or 200 hertz. There's usually just a bit of mud we can kind of pull out of the way there to clear up some room for the drums and other instruments. Next, we'll add some saturation and try out the different modes. Let's start off with Magneto. And maybe try tape instead. And maybe check out the tube as well, just for the sake of checking. In this case, I think the tube sounds nice and aggressive and really lets this 808 cut in that lower mid-range, which again is really critical for translation. Finally, to finish this off, we'll go over here to the Limit tab and add some Maximizer to taste. Do keep in mind the Maximizer is not really necessary in every single case. It's a really great way to make your 808s and other bass sounds stand up loud and proud inside of your mixes, but for more chill and restrained tracks, it might not be necessary. From here, you could easily bounce out a one-shot of this 808 sound to save it for later or put it in a sample pack or whatever you'd like to do. But another good idea is to save this whole thing as some kind of template. That way, whenever you feel like maybe just doing some sound design, you can easily access this processing chain, make some quick variations, and get a variety of sounds very quickly. And I think that wraps everything up for this video, so thanks for hanging out with me and I hope you enjoyed it. For more information on Cubase, you can head over to steinberg.net, and for more tutorials and all things Cubase, you can hit the subscribe button down below.